What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So you've seen the title then, today I'm gonna to walk you through step by step the exact Facebook ad strategy that I used to generate purchases for less than $5. So there's not really a lot more to say, I've got my Facebook ad account open, so let's jump straight into it. What is going on guys, welcome to my computer. So let's jump straight into the video then actually, and first things first, I wanna show you guys some results. So this is just for one particular campaign, then there's five ad sets within this one campaign. And the first number I wanna show you guys then is this per purchase cost here. So this is the average cost across this campaign, which was £3.63. As you can see, some of the ad sets were more expensive than that. There was this particular one which was cheaper. And then the next number I wanna show you guys is the cost per link click. Just because the first stage, the first ad set we're gonna be creating in this strategy then uh, requires you to know what your cost per link click is. Um, but before we actually jump into the strategy then, I just wanna refresh the page and actually show you guys that these aren't fake results. I'm not trying to mislead you guys. I've had a couple of people um, post on some past videos because I didn't refresh the page. So I just wanted to do that just to kind of prove to you guys um, that I'm not trying to mislead you or anything like that. Um, so anyway, that being said, let's jump into the strategy itself. In fact, before we get into this, again, a couple of other things I wanna show you. Um, so this is Facebook's business website where they basically just give you information and recommendations on how to get the most out of your Facebook ads. Um, so some interesting numbers just to make you guys aware of, again, because this strategy then, um, like I said in the intro, is kind of based on my own past experiences, but then at the same time, um, I pretty much got all my information from this website when I first started, and then I kind of adapt it to, to pretty much come up with my own strategies and pretty much find out what works. So this is the first thing I wanna show you guys, which is your ad set needs 50 conversions per week. So um, the key thing there is ad set, not campaign. One particular ad set needs 50 conversions per week for our delivery system to learn who it's best then to show your ads to. So when you hear a lot of people on YouTube talking about duplicating ad sets, that's not necessarily always the best thing to do because like it says here, the optimization then works on an ad set level. So when you duplicate an ad set, then essentially you're pretty much creating a brand new ad set and there's no then past data or past optimization for that particular ad set. So just something to consider. Um, when we're going through this strategy. So moving swiftly on then, I've got a bit conscious of the recent video lengths. They've all been pushing like 20 minutes. So I wanna try and cut it down and make it as information packed as possible. Um, so the next thing is, if there aren't enough people visiting your website, so at least 500 monthly pixel events, which is pretty much um, anybody taking an action on your website. So viewing your product page, adding something to cart. So if you're not getting 500 of them per month, then as it says there, it's gonna be difficult to drive sales. Moving on to the next point. Uh, so when it comes to creating lookalike audiences, essentially this is pretty much the foundations um, of every like ad set and campaign I build just purely because lookalike audiences are based on people who have already performed certain actions. So if you take two customers, then a customer who hasn't done anything and knows nothing about your your business and then you take a customer that's um, shown an interest and actually been to your product page, then obviously this customer who knows who you are, knows what products you're selling has been to your product page, it's gonna be so much easier to convert that person. So essentially we wanna try and find more people like that person and that's exactly what lookalike audiences are, which is why I base pretty much all my Facebook or all my Facebook ads, sorry, um, around lookalike audiences. Um, but one key thing I wanna show you guys here, which is your lookalike audiences will refresh themselves every three to seven days, as long as you're still actively targeting ads to it. So as long as you're still adding people to that audience, then essentially it will keep refreshing. Moving on to the next and final point before we actually get into the strategy um, is you can create up to 500 lookalike audiences from a single source audience. So I don't hear anybody else mention this, um, which is when you have a custom audience, then you obviously base on that custom audience to create a lookalike audiences. But what you can actually do is keep basing on that original audience source to create up to 500 lookalike audiences, if that makes sense. So again, I just want you guys to know these points and keep them in the back of your mind um, as we work through this strategy. So the ultimate Facebook ad strategy then, as it says there in brackets, for new pixels, because the strategy ultimately will be differently if, for example, if you've already sold a 
product within the dog niche. If you try and sell a different product within a dog niche, then your strategy is gonna be different. This is the best strategy for brand new pixels or brand new niches and essentially where Facebook has no past data um, on who your ideal customer is gonna be. So step one or ad set one then is gonna be a traffic ad set. Now, I might get a bit of hate for this, but I'm basing this on the complete beginner then who has pretty much no experience when it comes to Facebook ads because the reason traffic ad sets are better is because they're gonna bring in more, more visitors than um, what a website conversion ad set will do. If you go straight for purchases, for instance, then you're not gonna get as many visitors as you would using a traffic ad set. And if we go back to that Facebook point of needing 500 pixel events per month before you start going out for conversions, um, then this is why I like to start traffic ad sets. Now, a key note here is because a lot of people will ask this question is that yes, you can still be successful if you use website conversion objectives right off the bat, but if you do, then your actual ad copy and the audience you're going after needs to be more on point than it does with the traffic ad set because when you when you go straight for purchases, if you're selling a really good product and you put it in front of an audience that loves that product, then automatically you're gonna get engagement and you're gonna get traffic. So essentially you're gonna get what the traffic ad set would plus the chances or a better chance of those website conversions. But like I said then, this video is aimed at pretty much the beginner who might not necessarily get that ad copy and that audience on point from the very beginning. So that being said then, enough talking, let's actually get into what this strategy um, entails. So the first ad set is gonna be a traffic ad set. It's gonna be 50 pound per day. Now this is up to you, this is my personal this is how I would actually do it. I would start with 50 pound per day, but depending on what your budget is, you might start with less than this. But just keep this in mind, the more data you have, then the better informed and educated decisions you'll be able to make because of, because obviously you're gonna get, the more numbers and more data you have, then the better decisions you can make because if, for example, if you take product testing as, a, as an example, if you get one person to test a product and they love it, that's not like a, that's not a good enough kind of overall scope of the market to see if people are gonna like your product. Whereas if you get a thousand people to test your product, then only like the very first person you show it to might love it and then everybody else might hate it. And that's gonna tell you more information about that product if that makes sense. So what I'm trying to say then is, if you can afford 50 pound per day, then go for it. But if not, then just stick to what you can afford, but just keep in mind that obviously the more data you have, the better educated decisions you'll be able to make. So 50 pound per day budget, and that's gonna bring approximately 150 visitors a day if you do your job correctly. And what I mean by that then is you've got a decent product and you're putting it in front of the right audience. So two things then to keep, keep your eye on. Number one, which is the relevance score. This score is not the be all and end all because I've had ad sets that have had a relevant score of like four and five, but they've still been really profitable. But for traffic ad sets then, what I want you to do is get that score as high as possible because the higher that score is, then essentially the better your audience is reacting to your ad and the better reach and cheaper CPM you're gonna achieve, which is key then to get a maximum coverage and essentially achieving the lowest cost per link click as possible. As I mentioned in the intro, um, where is it? I managed to achieve 40p per action. Now this will vary very if you get confused um, or if you're not achieving a certain number that doesn't really match and you're not really sure what to do then feel free to reach out um, all my social media links are in the video description so essentially this is what we're going to be aiming for and that's going to bring approximately then 100 visitors per day and if you obviously work the averages out over the course of a month um, that's going to be way over 500 per month which is essentially what Facebook recommend before you start going after website conversions so once you hit 500 visitors then, so this is where we're gonna create ad set number two then, we're gonna choose purchase as our conversion objective and we're gonna use a seven day click as well because essentially what this does then is going back to that original point of needing 50 conversions per week, then what it does, if somebody clicks on our ad, then within seven days, if they then perform a purchase, they get counted towards those 50 conversions. So if you were to only choose a one day click and somebody purchased say 48 hours later, they don't get counted. So essentially you're not gonna be gathering as much data. So to begin with then until you're achieving 
pretty much 50 purchases per day, then I pretty much would leave all of my ad sets on seven day click. So ad set number two then, it's gonna be our first lookalike audience. It's gonna be the first 1%, which is gonna be the smallest amount and more focused audience. And it's gonna be based on the people or the conversion objectives of view content and add to cart, if you have any. If you've had 500 visitors, if you wait to that point, then as long as you're targeting, like I mentioned earlier, the right audience with the right product, then you're bound to get at least one person add to cart, if not purchase. So this first lookalike audience then, it's gonna be based on the people that have done um, exactly those actions. Now, as we move this strategy, then you'll probably realize a common theme, which is creating lookalike audiences. Now, lookalike audiences are key to succeeding just purely because you'll have you'll have a much easier time trying to sell a product to somebody who is similar to someone who has already shown an interest essentially um, I mentioned it earlier in the video but this is absolute key with Facebook ads if you try and sell a product to cold traffic so somebody who doesn't even know who you are then that's gonna be a lot more difficult than trying to sell it to what I call warm or hot traffic which is essentially people who have seen you before um, or similar to people who have seen you before so going back to ad set number two, then we'll get this our first lookalike audience, the first 1% based on people who have view contented and added to cart. Now, once we hit 100 add to carts, we hit that minimum threshold for creating a lookalike audience, which is 100 people. Once you have 100 people in an audience, you can then go ahead and use that to base on and create another lookalike audience. Now, Facebook recommends the the base audience should be anywhere from 1,000 to I think 5,000 or 50,000 people. But the whole point of this strategy then is building up to ad set number four, because ultimately then we wanna to get to that point in ad set four where we have 100 purchases that we can then base on and create a lookalike audience. Because when it comes to creating LLAs then, then it's quality over quantity. So essentially what we wanna do is we wanna be telling Facebook to base or create an audience then based on our most ideal situation, which is obviously customers who have made a purchase. So back to ad set number two then, once we hit those 100 add to carts we then move on to ad set number three now there's two ways to play this if your ad set number two is bringing in a profit for you then what i recommend you do is just leave that ad set let it run um, let it keep bringing you money in because the more money you can bring in the more money you'll have to then reinvest into your facebook ads however if it's not profitable then then what you should do is create your lookalike audience and simply change the target audience within the ad set level. I showed you guys earlier that um, Facebook states that ad sets convert on an ad set level. So the more kind of data we can keep in one particular ad set, then the better chance we have of that particular ad set um, of actually succeeding. So once you've created a new ad set then or amended number two, then essentially we're gonna be tagging people a lookalike audience based on our add to carts. And add to cart is obviously a better conversion than view content because it's closer to our ultimate goal then, which is people who make a purchase. So once we hit 100 purchases then within that ad set, we're then gonna go ahead and create number four or again, if it's not profitable, simply amend it within the ad set level um, and create a lookalike audience then based on those 100 purchases. As I mentioned earlier, that's the minimum threshold before we can create a lookalike audience. And this is essentially what we've been striving towards. This is where we wanna get um, as soon as possible because this is gonna be the highest quality audience. So we wanna start taking advantage of that as soon as possible. And essentially what we're gonna do is once we have this final ad set that has a target audience of lookalike purchases, then essentially we can move into things like scaling. However, um, I am gonna talk more than that later on in the video. So to kind of summarize it then, essentially you may have up to four ad sets running, you're gonna have the one, what I call lead gatherer, um, which is this ad set number one, which is essentially just bringing people onto your store. And people are only gonna come on your store then if they've got an interest in who you are and what you're selling. And if they have that interest, then the chances are some of them are going to add to cart at the very minimum, if not actually make a purchase as well. And once you hit 1,000 purchases, then once your custom audience has 1,000 purchases in, then you can run ad sets for lookalike audiences based on purchase only. So there's a couple of things you can do. Again, I'll talk about that later in the video as we get on to scaling down here. And you pretty much start the process again then with your top 100 spenders. So as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to creating lookalike audiences, 
Um, you want the highest quality possible audience as possible. So once you hit 1,000 purchases, you can then narrow them down to the top 100 spenders. So instead of say basing an audience on people who have just bought anything, you can say, actually, let's just target the top 100 people who have spent say over 20 pound because obviously that's a strong audience. That's a stronger conversion. Somebody spending say 20 pound with you instead of 10 pound, obviously we want more people like the people spending 20 pound if that makes sense. Um, and then as it says here just to kind of reiterate it this is really important and the quality of your audience is key not the quantity so key points then to take away from this video keep finding keep feeding sorry winning ad sets so you stay above the 50 conversion threshold so once an ad set drops below that 50 conversions per week, then it enters what's called a learning phase. I'm not going to go into too much detail. You can go out there and Google it, which is essentially, it basically means that Facebook isn't going to be delivering your ad optimally. So if an ad set is winning, then just make sure you keep it above that threshold to keep it out of that um, learning phase, essentially. Another key point then is make sure you stay above 500 website visitors per month or 500 pixel events, um, just so you've got a decent amount of traffic coming on your store basically so you can keep building up those custom audiences keep building up the data and then you're always going to have those people who have performed certain actions that you can then use to create more lookalike audiences essentially now i'm not saying you've got to keep ad set number one your traffic ad set to generate traffic to your store um, what i'm saying is that once you get to the point where you're bringing on significant traffic through ad set number four then which is your purchase lla then as long as you stay above of those 500 visitors per month um, then there's no need for that traffic asset that's purely there to start the process essentially what we're trying to do here is pretty much build up to this point where we've got 100 purchases as quick as possible um, but as you start to scale things out and you've got say five, six or even 10 ad sets all based on lookalike audiences or all based on purchases, um, then you're going to be, you're automatically going to get those visitors without actually actively having to have a traffic ad set if that makes sense. Um, so that being said, let's move quickly on to scaling. Now, I'm sorry if this video has been completely over the place. There's been so much to get through. I didn't want to leave any details out. I want to try and give you guys all the information up front, um, but naturally there are going to be questions. So feel free to just ask away in the comment section down below. I do get back to every single person. So scaling wise, then there's loads of different things you can do, but kind of like the main four. So you can create more lookalike audiences then and increase the audience size. So obviously you start off with 1% as they're going to be the closest people then you can go to 2% of your country population, 3%, 4% and so on and so on. Um, you can create more lookalike audiences, I think I briefly mentioned this earlier, uh, based on the same source. Now not a lot of people talk about this but you can actually do it um, and it's always worth doing as well because you're not always going to get that same percentage of people and one audience might work a lot better than another one, something you guys need to test and experiment with. But one thing to be wary of then is just be wary of audience overlap so what this is is when you create two audiences you can compare them then within the audience section of your ad manager account and it's going to tell you if that audience is overlapping with each other or not because if there's a high percentage of audience overlap then essentially the ad set is going to be competing against each other um, point number three then so you can e increase the budgets um, obviously of your LLA ad sets and again one thing to be wary of if you do go this route um, is just be wary of your frequency because depending on what country you choose to go ahead then the audience size is going to vary and if you're spending big numbers then there's going to come a point where everybody within that audience will have seen your ad and you're going to be spending money to show the same people your ad two, three, uh, maybe even four times. And then the fourth and final point, I had to put this in there because I've had results um, creating lookalike audiences from view contents, from add to carts. So I'm not purchase in hindsight is always going to be the best thing because ultimately that's what we want our customers to do and so we want more customers like the customers who have made purchases but that's not to say you won't find results experimenting then um, with other conversion objectives so 
That being said then guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. I apologize if I've talked really fast and rambled on and haven't made sense at points. Um, as I said earlier, feel free to ask as many questions as possible. Um, this Facebook ad strategy really does work. As you can see, it kind of goes on the guidelines that Facebook recommends. Um, you can see the kind of results I've been able to produce um, implementing this strategy as well. So one thing I do ask actually, if you do actually go and use this strategy, then make sure you come back, let me know what kind of results you get. Um, and that being said then, if you're still watching, thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please drop the video a like and any questions at all, then leave a comment down below. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.